Hello, my Zen Tangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zen Tangle Teacher. And I have to start by saying, yes, it has been a while since I did a video. Um, I've been on a short vacation while my grandchildren were on vacation. And I did try to do uh, video. And the first time that I did it, my internet connection stopped. So I wasn't able to finish it. And I tried the next day to do the video and um, I had a user error. <laughs> I didn't uh, pin my camera so that you were looking at what I was doing instead of my face. So that didn't work and I just gave up. But what I was gonna show you in that original video was this and it is called Noten. Let me write that down. N-O-T-A-N. -N. And it is a Japanese word for the balance between light and dark. And it's really uh, a fun thing to do. And all I did, this is an eight inch square piece of white paper. And then this is a four inch square. Both of these are just cardstock. And all you do is cut out these pieces and then essentially just flip them over and glue them. And then I did Zentangle in the centers and around the edge. This is Puff Border by Suzanne McNeil. And the rest of these I'm sure you recognize. Um, this is Puff, P-U-F by Carol O. And um, it's really fun, but I didn't want to do a whole new video again. <clears throat> this is one that I did when I was um, taking a class from the first CZT that I met, which was uh, Victoria McMillan. And she always did some really fun things in our class. And this is how I learned to do it. And on this one, I did a black background with a white piece of cardstock and made some different kind of edges and flipped them and glued them down. And then I also used white jelly roll on that. Now, if you look and do a search for no ton tutorials, you can find some that explain exactly how to do this. All right, and I'm sorry that didn't work, but I'm happy to be back and ready to show you a new video. Um, I didn't write down who this is by, but what I'm gonna show you, and this is not exactly what we're gonna do today, but this is Mary Hill, M-A-R-Y-H-I-L-L, -L, one word, and I'll put in the video who did this. Uh, but this is a really fun but easy pattern with a lot of potential. I did just a plain watercolor background on this piece of paper. And then um, I do plan to add some more things in this other background. But this is the pattern that I'm gonna show you today. And the way that it starts, uh, I marked these lines using the Marcus operandus. This is a apprentice tile because I wanted it to be a little bit bigger. And unfortunately, if you print the Marcus operandus the way that it is, you can't see all the lines. Now you can add some additional markings out here to get it to work. Uh, so in other words, you could extend these lines a little bit. See how I've done that? And then, because this is how it originally goes, it only goes to here. So I drew some extra lines to make that come out 
big enough that I could put my apprentice size tile on here. And then I just put a little mark on here where each of these come across, okay? Where these line up, excuse me. And then I did a line across each one to separate it. And the way that I did the circle <clears throat> was I used a coaster that happened to just fit on here. So I put the coaster down, drew around it, and then did my lines. Um, the other thing you can do, and by the way, the Marcus Operandas is available on the Zentangle website. If you go to Zentangle.com and search for it, you can find it. Uh, the other thing that you can do is I took a screenshot of this and put it into Word and then expanded it to be larger for the print. And then you can get everything to fit in there a little bit better. So um, I'm going to show you real quick how to get this started. And I'm just going to put my coaster there in the center. <clears throat> For this, I'm actually going to use, okay, I forgot to show you what I'm going to use today. Um, for demonstrating, I'm going to use the Micron 01 and uh, graphite pencil and my blending stuff. But for this actual tile, I am still going to use the graphite pencil to make my line. Okay. So if I tilt this a little bit, you can still see the line on here. Now I'm going to bring back my big Marcus Operandus. And I'm just going to center it the best I can. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to come down from this one, make a mark, this one, the ones that have the little orbs are the ones that I'm looking for. And we don't have to have perfection. We're just trying to get our lines on here so that it's separated nicely. Okay, so I have just little tick marks there. <clears throat> and now I'm going to uh, put my lines across and it helps to do it above first. And kind of get it straight. Okay, there's my first line. And then that diagonal. And I'm doing it first in pencil because I like to get it fairly straight. And then I will take my other pen and go over the pencil marks. Okay, so now you can see that I have it divided into eight sections. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am actually going to use glitter pens, the glitter metallic jelly roll pens. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And I am going to use silver on the outside and then I will show you later how those are going to come in because this is different from the way you've probably seen Mary Hill done in the past. When I was taking that class it was at a local community college 
And in that class <clears throat> was a man who really had some cool ideas. And this was one of the ways that he did Mary Hill. And I loved it. And so I'm going to show you that. So we're just going to go along this <clears throat> line. Excuse me. I'm going to keep clearing my throat. Okay. So we're going to do that. And then be aware that the jelly rolls dry slowly. I think I'm going to start from the center and maybe that will keep me from having to put my hand down and make my lines going out to each point. And jelly roll pins do a little bit better if you just move them softly across the page. Don't push down hard. You can always go over it a second time if you need to. Okay, <clears throat> and next what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you first on um, this one that I've already done a little bit, because it's a little bit easier to see on the white tile with my black pen. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start an aura. So on the curved side, I'm going to start right here and just bring it around, but I'm going to stop at about the same width that I have that aura. And what I'm shooting for is the center. Okay, so I want to go from this point to the center point. Okay, and then we do that again. And again, try to go to the center point. And I remember being told, watch where your pen is going, not where it's been or right where it's at. So if I put my pen here and I know that I need to go to that center, I'm gonna get it started, but I'm gonna watch that center. And hopefully it will help you get your pen going in the right direction. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and switch back to silver. And this should be dry. And it is. Always keep in mind that this is going to take a while to dry. And... Turn your tile to make this easier on your hand. And again, always try to go towards that center. If you don't, it gives you a totally different look. And once we get a couple of these done, if you want to, you can do uh, a higher speed 
on this video so that you're not having to watch me do every one of these lines. Okay, keeping in mind that this is still wet, I think I'll go to this side. I'm going to do the same thing. Do my curve, stop, and then bring it down in this direction toward the center. <clears throat> and it doesn't look like my pen is flowing very well. I'm going to slow down and do an easier touch. You can do this in white. You could do this center part in any color. And then do your other lines however you want. You could do a different color in each one of these. Just think about what if, what if I did this, which is what this guy did in our class. And he always had some really awesome ideas. So this is August 3rd, and my grandchildren, both of them, will be going to school soon. We're really hopeful that what's going on with COVID will not turn out to be a disaster for them. I have been fully vaccinated, but um, my brother and his wife and their grandson and their great granddaughter all have COVID right now. So I am being very cautious again. My brother and his wife were vaccinated, but um, they said it's not so bad, they have not been hospitalized, so that's good. But I'm going back to being extra cautious. Okay, so we're just gonna keep doing this. You can also do this on a, any size tile. Sorry, I didn't mention that in the beginning. You could do this on a three and a half inch tile, a four inch piece of cardstock, um, apprentice tile, I believe is four and a half inches. I did this on the one that I showed you to begin with on this one. I did that this morning kind of as a meditation and I goofed up <laughs> in this part. I tried a what if and I didn't like how it came out. So the nice thing about the black pen is you can cover up and oops. Well, actually, it wasn't a mistake. It just, I didn't like how it looked. So I just went over it with the black and it really changed it up. I like how it looks. Okay, making sure that this isn't wet so I can put my hand on it. The other thing you can do if you're worried about something like that is to put another piece of paper down and then. Put your hand on top of that. But like I said, it's not wet, so I'm not going to worry about it. Watch where your pen is going, not where it's been, which is kind of a metaphor for life, huh? See where we're going and stop worrying about where we've been. Anyway, when the kids go to school, 
I will have free mornings and part of the afternoon before they get out of school. And I'm hoping to do a little bit more on my videos. I'm trying to put the same number in here, but I don't know if I am. <clears throat> It doesn't have to be perfect. And I really get into doing this, so I forget to talk, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I watched this guy on YouTube, Jay Lee Paints, and he rarely talks. And I just, I get mesmerized. To me, it's almost a meditation just watching him do his work. And he uses some really different tools to uh, do his paintings. Some things from the kitchen. Uh, and one that I did with my grandchildren was we used cotton balls and cotton swabs to do a painting. And the kids loved it. Okay, I'm happy to say that I have done this one right. Part of what I did wrong in this one was I did not on one of these go to the center. I ended up doing like a straight R all the way down and it did not come out right. So I was happy to just go over it. I don't know if you can tell that this is a metallic silver. Kind of just looks like white. But there you can see it's kind of shiny. All right. Almost done. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to show you before I go on how Mary Hill is actually done. Okay. So when you've finished these, and I will still go ahead and do that. Um, you take your graphite pencil and just follow along where these corners are and just add some graphite, okay? And then you take your tortillon, the blending stump, and then just soften this, okay? And I'm going to pull it towards this direction and then in the direction that the lines go. Okay. And then as you do that on each one of these, it gives you a pinwheel. P 
pin wheel, there we go, effect. And you can do this in different sizes. If you go to the lady's website, and I will give you a link to her uh, step outs. It's also available on tanglepatterns.com. But she also shows some variations on how to do this in a grid, and how to do it as a border. But I enjoy just doing it this way. Okay, I'll do one more, then you can see how this one turns out. Okay, pretty cool. On this one, I actually put a line to connect these across this way. Okay, but you don't have to do that. That's just another effect that you can do with this. But now I'm going to show you how to do this with the colors on the jelly roll pin. Okay, so first I'm going to show you the first tile that I did. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these colors of jelly roll pins, but we're going to bring them back across this kind of like a little spider web, and it just has an awesome effect. You see the difference between those. So I'm going to start with my purple jelly roll. Again, this is jelly roll metallic. And the first thing I'm going to do is come from this corner, just like I did with the graphite and connect these dots or the corners rather and then come back to that center and then we're going to do the same thing but we're going to aura this and I'm not going to do as many as we have here just like every other one bring it down to that same point Let's skip over go to that one, skip one, go here, here, okay, can you see that? If you need to, go over it again. so that your color is a little brighter. It's better in person, but I can see that it's purple. And I'm gonna use these twice, so. The next one that I'm going to do is uh, blue. Again, start at the corner and bring it in towards the center. Go over it again if you need to. I'm going to skip one line and go to this one and R that down to that point. This is what they call an anchored aura because it's anchored at the same point. And 
And then I'm going to go over it again. Very carefully. Just to give it a little bit more color. Okay, so that's the blue. Uh, let's see, I think next I'll do green. Okay. And I have tested each of these pins ahead of time to make sure they're going to work. And I have a lot of jelly roll pins and some bright colors. But uh, I was hoping that these metallic pins would show up well. I hope that all of you have had a great summer. Okay, the next one I'm gonna use is gold. The neon jelly roll pins look really good, but uh, I kind of thought it might be more likely that you would have the metallic seem to be kind of popular. And especially with the gold, if you just barely touch your paper, it's much easier to uh, get the ink to flow. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the one that I used first, and that's the purple. And I'm trying to not touch that in case it's still wet. And I don't know if I mentioned on the Notan, N-O-T-A-N, on that uh, that I showed you. If you do a Google search for that, Notan, some people, I used to call it Notan, uh, but when I looked it up for how to pronounce it, it's Notan. And Look up what other people have done. There are some fantastic designs out there. Okay, next would be the blue. And this would look really good on uh, white also with the jelly rolls. But I just really liked how this looked when I did it uh, in class on black. So that's what I wanted to share with you. Okay, so there's the blue. Uh, next is green.
Okay, now I'm gonna go back over it a little bit just to get it a little bit brighter. And that was a little bit wobbly right there. So let's see if I can fill that in. Okay. And then the last one will be gold again. And again, I am skipping these lines. You don't have to line up with those, but I think it looks good. And by the time you come around to this other side, these are dry. And I'm able to put my hand on there. All right, there you go. That was an easy tile. And like I said, in person, the colors show up better. Try this on a, a white tile, either three and a half or four, whatever size you'd like to, and try the different colors. Like I said, this is my stack of jelly roll pins. I have so much <laughs> to choose from, but uh, I think this will come out really well. All right, I'm happy to be back. Happy that my uh, recording seems to be working right this time. And I hope to have something for you again soon. Thanks for watching. Have a good week. Bye.